Hi everyone, hope you guys are in the good state of health. So, in this video, we will learn about the Life Cycle Assessment, LCA. But I will explain to you guys more on Chapter 3 which is about the Life Cycle Inventory Analysis. I hope you will enjoy watching this video. In this Chapter 3, I will explain to you guys about the illustration of the inventory phase of LCA, with an example, Part B. And here is the content which is I will focus on the allocation, modeling of the system, and the calculation of the life cycle inventory. So, what is allocation? As we know, allocation is the attribution of environmental burdens during the life cycle, especially for the co-production, recycling, and disposal. Since allocation are always based on conventions, the transparent description of allocation rules is great important for the credibility and understanding of the study. Therefore, in this exemplary study, the allocation rules are described on three levels, which is the first one is process level, the second one is the system level, and the last one is the waste treatment. Definition of allocation rules on process level. As we know, Allocation results for a multi-output process in a life cycle assessment study, depend on the definition of the unit process, which can vary with the depth of a study. Therefore, there are three different approaches to define a unit process, which is the first one is the macroscopic approach, the second one is quasi-microscopic approach, and the last one is microscopic approach. The unit process may be a manufacturing site, a sub-process, or an operational unit. For example, like the distillation column or reactor. So, here is the simplified system flow chart of packaging system for 1000 milliliters of beverage carton, which covering the reference flows. As you can see, the masses indicated refer to the functional unit which packaging necessary for the supply of 1 liter filling material to the point of scale. The beverage carton and the necessary fibrous materials are predominantly manufactured by integrated plants of the paper industry. Usually, a product range of set of paper or cardboard products with different fiber composition is usually covered. This and the networking of the energy supply of and fibers lines made the allocation of the energy consumption and the energy sources to individual product and fiber lines even more difficult. In the available data records the appropriate allocations, are accomplished by the plant operators themselves. The data records made available can be considered as inventory data. However, the original data and the applied procedures were not available for the contractors. Next. Here is the example of the simplified system flow chart of packaging system for 1000 milliliters of PET bottle, which covering the reference flows. The mass units refer to the functional unit, which is the packaging necessary for the supply of the filling materials to the point of scale. Next, we moving on to the definition of allocation rules on system level for open loop recycling. In this study, the allocation for an open loop recycling is made according to the 50 to 50 ratio method and also a standard technique in UBA. Here, the use of secondary material is evenly distributed in a 50 to 50 relationship between the delivering and the receiving system. In the case of a recycling of beverage cartons, the benefits in the example is a replacement of fresh fibers. This benefit is technically assessed in the beverage carton system in the form of credit. The height of the credit thereby amounts to 50% of the substituted fresh fiber production proportion, due to the employment of secondary fibers. However, in this study, the original UBA approach is modified because in the allocation method, the phrase, disposal, of life cycle 2, LC2 of the secondary product is additionally considered in the allocation method. Actually, there is at least three different system levels, at which allocation in open loop recycling can be dealt with, which is the first one is recycling process, the second one is the product life investigated, and the last one is the cascade or material life cycle. 
So, here is the example of system level for open loop recycling, which consists of three product life cycle. Firstly, for the product life cycle 1, it begins with the primary material production, V1, production of product P1 and use of product P1, and later will be in the first recycling process, R1. Next, for the product life cycle 2, the production of product P2 will use the product P2, before it will be recycled again in second recycling process, R2. Lastly, for product life cycle 3, the production of product P3 will use the product from R2, and will be used in product P3 before it will be processed in the waste treatment, R3. Moving on to the modeling of the system. So, before we made the system, there are some aspects that we must look for, which is the first one is we should introduce the calculation rules. This is because, if all considered unit processes and allocation rules are clearly defined, the calculation rules according to which unit processes are to be connected have to be introduced. Next, we also should consider the use of software programs. This work is comfortably accomplished by the use of software programs, like the Umberto, with appropriate input masks and connections to the databases provided. Lastly, we should realize the logic of product system. This is because, the conductors of an LCA in general have to correctly realize the logic of the product system, before start the calculation because the LCA software cannot provide adequate linkage to the product system. Next, for the calculation of the life cycle inventory. If the system is modeled adequately and all process data records are available in sufficient quality, the LCI of the examined product system can be calculated. Since the designation of inputs and outputs may vary even for the same substance, the same substance may occur with different designations in an LCA. Moreover, if the calculation of an impact assessment is accomplished by means of a software, it must be assured that all variants of the same substance are clearly assigned. As we know, in this list, both inputs and outputs are indicated as elementary flows. Also, we need to remember that the elementary flows are defined according to ISO 14040 and ISO 14044, section 3.12, as material or energy entering the system being studied, that has been drawn from the environment without previous human transformation, or, material or energy leaving the system being studied, that is released into the environment without subsequent human transformation. Here is the example of inventory data energy sources, which consists of raw materials in deposit, RID. The example of source of energy for raw materials in deposits, like the natural gas, oil, brown coal or lignite, coal, non-specific and hard coal. As supplement to these defined elementary flows, the LCI results CED, and the use of natural land are included. The minus sign in this table, signifies that the CED is not assigned to the impact category. This is because, the development of a scientifically justified transfer of LCI data into impact indicator, still not allow a complete use of all LCI data, and if you want to know more about this, you may find out at the chapter 4 later for more details. Lastly, I will explain to you guys about the inputs and outputs. As we know, an initial approach to complete a life cycle assessment, is a process-based LCA method. In a process-based LCA, the itemizes of inputs and outputs are important for a given step in producing a product. Therefore, the inventory relates to the compilation of various environmental inputs and outputs, that involved in the life cycle of a product. The example of inputs, like the energy, water, and the raw materials, while the example of outputs, like usable products, water effluents, airborne emissions, solid wastes, and other releases. In the real basis, to develop the inventory, a flow model of technical system is constructed, using data on inputs and outputs, and usually it illustrated in a flowchart. 
This is the simple example of flow model of technical system, which consists of inputs and outputs. This is because, LCI analysis is defined by ISO, as the phase of life cycle assessment which involving compilation and quantification of environmental inputs and outputs, for a product throughout its life cycle. This simple model indicates a typical process flow diagram, with generalized unit processes, like the raw material acquisition, manufacturing processing and formulation, distribution and transportation, and so on. I think we have learned a lot so far. So, why don't we have some recap? My easy question for you guys is, usually, what is the ratio that has been used in the allocation for an open loop recycling? Is it 40 to 60, 50 to 50, or 60 to 40? Yes, the correct answer is 50 to 50, which distributed in a fair relationship between the delivering and the receiving system. Congratulations if your answer is correct. So, I think that's all for this video. Hopefully, you guys can get lots of information regarding the life cycle inventory when watching this video. Before that, don't forget to like this video if you think this video is beneficial for you guys, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more interesting video. Thank you.